Hello and welcome to this review of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's Code Buddies live coding session, <clears throat> we had a pretty fruitful conversation, a lot of uh, active uh, people in the chat. It was really fun, good time. Took a long time uh, on all these little digressions. But here we're going to just take a look at the code that was written. If you want to check out the progress in the project, go to uh, github.com slash codebuddies slash Django concept. It's where we're working. We're rewriting this codebuddies.org website uh, using a variety of technologies. I'm helping with the Django project in particular. Uh, there's not really a front end feature. Um, right now for the code I wrote today. So I'll just briefly go over the changes we made during the live coding session. <clears throat> Some of them weren't totally relevant to the um, actual task at hand, but essentially one of the code buddies main goals is to be an educational platform to where people can help each other uh, to do our own uh, code problems uh, or build open source projects together. And one of the goals for the version, the new version, uh, version three, I think, uh, Code Buddies version three platform will be to offer a resource directory where people can share videos and podcasts, tutorials, talks, blog posts, books, games, events, libraries, and websites relating to everything you would need to be a fruitful and productive and happy coder. And we realize that these resources will have common themes and a typical approach to organizing things on websites is to tag them with keywords that like this is a python resource this is a javascript resource this one's about reductive uh, productivity this one's about uh, mindfulness you know things that all uh, of which uh, could be helpful along somebody's coding path so really Tagging is a very common pattern. It's so m common, in fact, that there's already a library for that. It's not part of the Django core library, uh, but there's a package called Django Tag It, which is very easy to get in started with. You just install it. Uh, you make sure that it's in your project installed apps so that it can be found, it can, you can import and use it. And then in your model, that is gonna have a tagging tag field, tags field typically, you'll import this thing called taggable manager and define a tags field with a taggable manager. And lastly, on this getting started page is very succinct. It might be desirable in your project uh, to allow tags to be case insensitive. For example, JavaScript with a capital J and S would be the treated the same as JavaScript with everything lowercase. That way you don't get kind of arbitrary duplication um, you know, somebody not capitalizing the first letter of a word or maybe accidentally capitalizing J, uh, A, V, uh, you know, S, C in JavaScript or something accidentally holding a shift key to and you never know. Uh, I've done it quite, you know, numerous times, so no shame in the game. This will just allow it to be case insensitive. That way you'll have a consistent tagging, um, well, I guess taxonomy and uh, you don't have to worry about doing any of the code yourself or casting things to lowercase, from my understanding. So that's really all we did in today's live code. It took three hours, but there was also some learning to do with getting this um, Code Buddies project up and running on a development machine, machine and uh, some improvements we can make to the code structure, the documentation, and things like that. So hence three hours of yeah, messing around, having fun. So all we did really is lint. A lot of these red lines here are just lint. It was automatically linted for me. I installed auto pep eight and it took care of it. So again, I want to say there's no shame in the game. Uh, this um, is a work in progress. We're just improving things incrementally. So just because we're changing the way things were to a new way, doesn't mean that the way things were, were um, you know, naive or wrong. It just means the decisions at one point to move the project forward maybe are a foundation for small improvements. That's all we're trying to do, subtle improvements. Um, so originally we had defined it as a, a JSON field so that we could essentially in the um, API, you're gonna ask for an array of JSON objects. That's how the API is designed. Um, and so we wanna honor that. And in our data model though, we don't necessarily internally have to store this JSON, but 
defining it pr uh, primarily as a JSON field allows us to rapid prototype to get something out the door and get some feedback. So now that we're a little bit past the rapid prototype phase, we've got our initial resources model uh, reviewed and merged. Uh, we're just going to do a small imp uh, improvement, small change here, uh, switch into this tag taggable manager, and we'll get to all the benefits of Django tag it module. Really, it was just one line of code and a bunch of lines of lint of, um, again, just using auto pep eight. Highly recommend using that in part of your um, development process. That way you don't have to like, you know, worry about it. And when you save your file, you'll, you'll be linted. It won't catch major errors, but it will keep things nice and tidy. Uh, well, the other thing we had to do, and this uh, was um, a couple things I did here. One is I'm importing the o operating system, the OS module so that I, for a prototype app, just want to use SQLite for my database. When your application is more mature and you've deployed it to production and you're using a particular database in production like Postgres, at that point, your local development environment should be as close to possi as possible to the remote uh, deployment. Well, right now, we're prototyping. We're not even really deploying this, so SQLite is a very common and quick way to get started. Um, although I didn't want to disrupt the, the default behavior, which was to pull the database um, URL from an environment variable. So I wanted to leave that in place and leave it as the default, but give people option of uh, setting a SQLite environment variable, if that does exist or if it's true, um, then just set up a local SQLite. And this is actually the way uh, Django behaves by default. And I think it's because it wants to keep things simple to get started. So that's all. I just added a quick little if statement there, looking for an environment variable. And now we just import our tag it library in the third party apps section of our configuration. Not every Django project is configured like this. And finally, I allowed case insensitive. That's about it. I haven't done a lot of thorough testing uh, by the API or anything. I'm looking forward to feedback in the pull request and some more thorough testing. And it might be that in our serializers, we need to add some code. I'm not exactly sure, but the. Uh, live coding session was already at three hours and I have a couple more things I want to do and we're going to have another live coding session today so uh, you'll be watching this on YouTube uh, so that all of that's not really relevant but uh, in any case that's where we stand this these are the changes that were made made today and again this has been part of codebuddies.org live coding series uh, well actually not a series but I have been working on a lot of Django projects lately and this code buddies um, live coding session Today was the first time I worked on the Code Buddies platform directly. Code Buddies, though, is a really great community. There's no hierarchy there. Everybody's there to teach and learn from one another and share best practices and ideas. Uh, if Python and Django aren't your kind of cup of tea, there's a lot of other groups. Everything from CSS, game development, Ruby on Rails, Java, Rust, AWS, PHP, Go, Elixir all sorts of good stuff. So you can find a group to study with and to hang out on codebuddies.org. And we welcome you to contribute to our open source development process, bring your ideas, bring your experience. Uh, the more people we have around here, the better the project will be. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.